Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Thursday, September 20th, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, both free sites. Let's talk about this upcoming heavyweight title fight. AJ, former Olympic gold medalist, against Alexander Povetkin, former Olympic gold medalist. Somehow, AJ is going off as a 7-1 to one favorite. I think this fight deserves your attention, regardless of who you think is going to win. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say this. If you want to make money betting on professional sports the first rule of thumb in my opinion is to control your expenses right cut down on the expenses that you don't need to have so some of these boxing prices have gotten out of control haven't they you hear about a fight involving an A-level fighter. And by A-level, let's be clear here. I'm just talking about a popular fighter of the moment, right? The fighter doesn't necessarily have to be a Ray Robinson or a Ray Leonard, right? And the prices have gotten ridiculous. $79.99 here in the United States. You say to yourself, man, do I want to spend this much money? $89.99, right? It's, it's out of hand. And the problem is, it hurts the sport. Because while we all want to see fighters get paid, keep in mind, this is a dangerous sport. Very dangerous. You've had some all-time greats end up with tremors. Right? You have a whole other set of fighters who they hardly ever interview because you can barely understand what the guy is saying. Right, There's a great heavyweight champion who's no longer with us, who when he was alive, my college roommate thought he was Jamaican. He came over to me. I was born in Kingston. He came over to me and said, you must be really proud of this guy. And I said, why is that? And my roommate said, oh, because he's Jamaican. And I had to say, no, this fighter's from Philadelphia. <laughs> he's just sounding like he's Jamaican. Right? So understand, the sport's dangerous. I'm totally in favor of fighters getting multi-million dollar purses, hundred million dollar purse. I got no problem with that. But I do have a problem paying... $79.99 and $89.99 for one-off fights and then having it where your friends haven't even seen the fight because they've prioritized things like food and water that you're giving up on to see the fight, right? The mortgage, uh, daycare bills for the kids, private school bills for the kids, right? The car note. You don't want to be placed in that position. Now, in this day and age, you don't have to be. One of the best bargains on the board, make yourself a winner before the fight even takes place, folks, is the subscription to DayZen. Now, I'm not getting paid by DayZen, D-A-Z-N, right? I'm not, I'm not getting paid by them. I'm just a fan of the sport. But I like the idea that I get to see the heavyweight champion of the world. In fact, let's face it. I know I've criticized the guy here online in the past. But even I recognize that this guy is Mr. Box Office for the division. And that's Anthony Joshua. And you mean to tell me that I can sign up for days in, not pay any money, Get a 30-day trial subscription, and I actually get to watch, free of cost, Anthony Joshua against Alexander Povetkin? That's crazy. It, it gets even better than that to me. You mean to tell me in this day and age when 
you know, I personally have shelled out, you know, seventy nine ninety nine for a fight and stuff like that. I was on some app for the Mayweather McGregor fight, right? Missed a lot of the undercard because of technical difficulties. Complained about it after the fight, and of course, what did they give me? A baseball cap. Right? That's what you're getting these days for $79.99 and $89.99. You mean to tell me that Days In is only charging me $9.99? This is in the U.S., right? In the comment section here, if you're in the U.K. or Europe, whatever country you're in, tell us the price Days In is charging you. Right? Let's get the information out there so consumers can make educated decisions. But they're only charging $9.99. That means every 10 months, I'm out about $99.99 for big time fights most of those months. That's a great deal, folks. Also, ESPN Plus. I understand Disney saying that that's been a runaway success. That's where Manny Pacquiao fights. Same type setup, right? I believe that's a big bargain. This is the direction the sport needs to go. Because when you run into your friends who follow boxing, you want everyone to have seen the latest fights. You want to be able to talk with guys and have a real conversation. You don't want to say, yeah, man, you remember that Anthony Joshua, Eric Molina fight? Then your friend says, oh, I didn't see that. Then you say, yo, what about the Anthony Joshua, um, Joseph Parker fight? And your friend says, oh, I didn't see that. After a while, that gets tired. Unfortunately, that's the world we've been living in, right? Because brothers are saying, what? $79.99, $89.99, my kid needs a bike. <laughs> you know, hey, play we got to put food in our fridge. Hey, hey, I got to pay my taxes, right? So give Days In a look here. Understand, too, the way these apps are, I can tell you, I know firsthand with ESPN Plus, and I'm sure Days In is the same way. You can bounce that right off your big screen, right? In other words, don't think when you're hearing apps and stuff like that that takes you off the big screen. No, no, the technology is there, folks, as anyone who uses YouTube TV knows, right? You can bounce it right off your big screen in HD, high definition. So you're getting the cheaper price, you're getting the greater assortment of fights, right? Because understand, heavyweight promoters, top rank, Eddie Hearn, they're the ones involved in these ventures. They have stables of fighters. Manny Pacquiao, Anthony Joshua, they're just the elite face of the promoter, right? The promoter has a stable of fighters. You get to see the stable. When your friends subscribe, they get to see the whole thing, right? So to me, Days In, monumental step forward. If you're a skeptic of it, Sign up for free for the first 30 days. Watch the heavyweight title fight. And then ask yourself, gee, didn't I just get more than my money's worth? Especially since you didn't pay anything for the first 30 days. Let's talk about the fight. Now look, I know I'm going to have a bunch of people after this fight online in the comment section to this video saying ha 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 you know whatever I say here you were wrong it didn't turn out the way you thought it was right regardless of what I say the odds don't matter to these people they're odd tone deaf I can tell these are people hanging out in cafes not casinos right you pick an underdog your big underdog is Hanging tough. Fight hangs in the balance. You end up with a split decision that goes against him. A lot of people are going to say, ah, the favorite one, you were wrong. Okay, whatever. Okay, to that crowd, there's nothing I could say here. 
But let me just say, we're in a weird world right now, aren't we? Seven to one? And I get Povetkin? Folks, with all due respect to the heavyweight champion, and he's immensely talented, one of the hardest punchers in boxing today, Anthony Joshua. Right? With all due respect to Anthony Joshua, just to understand that when the odds get to be completely ridiculous, I believe a smart person assessing risk is going to have to take them. They don't even have to tell you who the opponent is. When you hear Alexander Povetkin, a guy who's only lost once, and that's the Vladimir Klitschko, right? Goes the distance in the fight. I know he hits the canvas, but he goes the distance in the fight. When a guy has been in the game as long as Alexander Povetkin has the same Olympic gold medal that Anthony Joshua has had, right? Has had the sustained run of success and has only lost to a boxing Hall of Famer. The minute they say to you seven to one odds, you need to get out of your seat and you need to take that bet. When you're at the counter, you can then ask the other question, who's he fighting? Right? Understand when odds get ridiculous, you've got to take the bet. We can argue on who wins Joshua Wilder. Right? I'm just here telling you that if I hear that either of those guys is a seven to one underdog, seven to one, I'm going to get out of my seat and I'm going to go bet on that guy. Let me say this too, and I don't say it lightly. The Mayweather Manny Pacquiao rematch, right? Mayweather's been out of the ring. Mayweather, you know, wants a tune up fight. Folks, that's. That's not reassuring if you're on the Mayweather side of the play, right? Mayweather, who lived in Vegas, not just literally, when he was out of the ring, but when he was in the ring as well. Look at the number of fights for Floyd Mayweather in Vegas. Mayweather is now going to fight Manny Pacquiao in Japan. How did that work out for Mike Tyson? Right? When you're a guy who likes home cooking, now suddenly you're going to be on the road? I believe the way to play that is by playing the odds. In other words, the minute you hear that any of those fighters, Manny or Floyd, is going off at 3-1 to one or whatever, that's the side you need to be on. You can hedge the play. But that's the side you need to be on. Boxing's a competitive sport. Even the great fighters have been tested. Ali gets dropped, prime Ali, by Sonny Banks. Right, gets dropped. The Henry Cooper fight. Ali's in such trouble in that fight that Angelo Dundee has to cut his gloves to buy time. Right? That's a guy who they call the greatest. I saw Lennox Lewis get knocked out cold by Haseem Rockman. Right? Lewis lost to Oliver McCall. Right? I believe Lennox Lewis is one of history's best heavyweights. Right? Vitaly Klitschko, another guy I consider a great heavyweight. He once quit in a fight. Lost his title to Chris Bird. Folks, these are elite fighters. These are guys I expect to be in the Hall of Fame. You remember Vladimir Klitschko against Corey Sanders. How about Vladimir Klitschko against Lehman Brewster? For the boxing hardcore, you remember Vladimir Klitschko at home, running out of gas against, I believe it was Ross Purity. Right? So understand, this is a competitive sport. I mentioned Mike Tyson. Right? Buster Douglas stops 
Mike Tyson. Right? I'm not even naming fights where the guys are out of their primes. I've just named some great fighters who lost in their primes. No one is unbeatable. Right? I understand. The Marciano crowd, the Mayweather crowd, they'll say, hey, our guy's retired unbeaten. I'm telling you, if you look hard, at their careers, you're gonna find some very tough moments. Ronan Lestarza, I'm telling you, many old timers believe he beat Marciano. Right, the first time they fought. Rocky is down big to Jersey Joe Walcott. That fight's on film. Rocky gets dropped by Archie Moore, gets up dazed and confused. Archie Moore to this day believes the referee's actions after Marciano gets off the canvas costs him the title. Right? The Castillo-Mayweather fight. Look at HBO's scoring of that fight, the first time they fought. Look at Floyd's lack of a strategy when Castillo, who was the sparring partner for Julio Cesar Chavez, Right? Look at how Floyd looks confused by Castillo's inside game. Floyd cleans that up by the time he fights Ricky Hatton, but in that fight, it easily could have gone the other way. Right? So, I'll just put it to you this way. Anthony Joshua is unbeaten. At times, he looks unbeatable. I don't dispute that at all. But this is a highly, let me say it again, highly competitive sport. You look at some of these long range, Joe Lewis once got so beaten by Jersey Joe Walcott that after the fight he leaves the ring, just like Golovkin did, only to have the ring announcer when he's outside the ring announce that he was the winner of the fight. Right, great fighters will have photo finishes, will have near misses. So I see Anthony Joshua here. Seven to one favorite. You mean they're telling me that if he fights Alexander Prevekin, who's lost one time in his career, by the way, to a fellow Olympic gold medalist to a younger version of Vladimir Klitschko than the Klitschko who Joshua fights in Klitschko's last fight, right? You're telling me that these odds are suggesting that if these guys fought eight times, eight times, that Joshua would win seven of them? By the way, the odds are even longer than that. I'm just talking about it from the Povetkin side of the aisle because that's where I'm getting the 7-1. to one. Hey, no one needs to put a bow on the package for me. Look, I'm taking Joshua in, excuse me, I'm taking Povetkin in this fight. And I'm going to hedge the play with Joshua by KO because I'm expecting an active fight to break out. Now, let me say this, too. Joshua is a guy who clearly takes care of himself, right? He's not out in back alleys in Harlem fighting Mitch Green like Mike Tyson was. He's not shooting movies and then showing up and getting knocked out like Lennox Lewis did. Now, this guy is an Evander Holyfield type guy. You know the guy. He's always in shape. Right? Bernard Hopkins, who didn't need a donut for something, you know, more than a decade. Right? These guys are always in shape. Vitaly Klitschko. Right? Always in shape. And I've noticed that AJ is trying to increase his mobility. Right? He's keeping himself on the lighter side for this fight. 
And you notice AJ is trying to do things to avoid shootouts. In other words, younger AJ meets Dylan White in the ring and is throwing bombs. Older AJ against Joseph Parker, he's throwing jabs. He's setting things up, right? But what I want you to do is to focus on the mobility of his opponents. Joseph Parker is a great athlete in my opinion. Has movement. Did not move much against AJ. Right? He's around the pocket almost as much as Canelo was in the Golovkin rematch. Carlos Taka, right? Really in front of AJ. Tackham's not a runner to begin with, right? Tackham's in front of AJ. AJ doesn't really have to go find him. Also, AJ shoots a jab. Tackham can't get out of the way of the jab, right? He's getting hit with the jab, kind of like Canelo got hit with Golovkin's jab. Dominique Brazil. I thought it was an interesting fight, but Brazil gets hurt early, doesn't he? And Brazil, who has moved in fights, is like Parker. He's close to AJ. AJ can find him. Are you certain you know what happens if AJ is in against a KG vet who moves better than the guys I've mentioned, who's had a fight, where he, the fight he lost, trust me, of all the fights Povetkin's had, I'm sure the one he lost is one of the major memories. That fight, he was too predictable. Just like Lennox Lewis said that Joseph Parker predictably moved straight back. Right? Povetkin was coming in on straight lines against Klitschko. So now Povetkin is circular. You'll notice that he's picking his spots. He's a little bit more episodic. Also, Povetkin understands winning a decision in tough venues, right? You're fighting an Englishman in London. Isn't the way you want to go. So when Povetkin's in against David Price, an Englishman in the UK, Povetkin makes sure he's throwing bombs. I want you to revisit that fight. Look at the spacing. Look at how Povetkin is throwing heavy punches early. He wants chaos. He doesn't want an orderly, well-behaved fight. He wants disorder. He wants his opponent to be guessing exactly where he's coming from. He's taking chances. He gets hit with some bombs from David Price, who's a gifted puncher. Right? AJ's a gifted puncher. But understand, sometimes these guys who give you windows in which to hit them, or actually taking you out of your comfort zone. I think this fight is fascinating. I think AJ might not leave the ring with his belt. This fight looks to me to be a jump ball. Right? If it weren't for AJ's personality, his, dare I say, celebrity, if it weren't for our hopes, because sometimes we project them onto fighters, our hope for some dominant champ to emerge in this post-Klitschko world, right? We just went through a multi-year period where it was one brother, the other brother, the other brother comes back and, you know, it was Klitschko, Klitschko, Klitschko. Well, now we're post-Klitschko. And we want someone great. So here you have a talented guy, right? Who talks about unity, 
who has an Africa tattoo on him. He's like straight out of central casting, isn't he? Who won an Olympic gold medal in his home country. Right? Who looks like a guy who you wouldn't mind babysitting your kids. Right? You know, some chance, let's say Mike Tyson wants to babysit my kids. I'm talking about old Mike Tyson from the 1980s. You'd be like, uh, you know, my... Uh, Babe, I'm not sure if we want to send Junior over to Mike Tyson. Right? But this guy, this guy looks warm and cuddly. Right? Looks like he views the throne of the heavyweight championship as a position from which he can be a positive influence. Right? No one has to rein him in. You get the feeling that Anthony Joshua wants to be classy and polite in interviews. He wants to be a role model. Right? This is not Carlos Monzon running the street between fights. This isn't Ricky Hatton in the pub. Right? This is a gentleman as heavyweight champion. So I think we're attributing to him our hope for the next great heavyweight champion. And I think gamblers know that's a mistake. Seven to one in a heavyweight title fight and he's fighting a dude who hasn't lost for years? Come on, man. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. This is one of the easier fights to bet on, right? I'll take my chances. I think Brevetkin is going to make this fight so rough and tumble that the idea of either guy getting a decision is going to go out the window. Right? Brevetkin just saw what happened to Golovkin. I think right now, before the fight, Brevetkin knows when they enter the rig, they're probably going to be tens of thousands more AJ supporters in the crowd than Prevetkin supporters. So, I believe this is that fight where Prevetkin's not going to allow the fight to go the distance. I think this is a guy who has waited for this opportunity for a long time. Understand? He was a mandatory. Teddy Atlas was his trainer. Teddy somehow convinced him not to take the title fight. Didn't think he was ready. Then he fights Vladimir Klitschko in Prevetkin's backyard. Couldn't have been set up better. Gets caught early. Gets held when he comes inside. Loses that fight. His only loss. Then he's set to fight Deontay Wilder. In his backyard. That's how popular he is at home, folks. Wilder crosses the Atlantic to come fight him, only to learn that Prevetkin has failed a drug test. Right? So Prevetkin has had a lot of near misses. And older guys understand they're running out of opportunities. This is his chance. He's not going to rely on the judges. Right? This is that warrior mentality, in my opinion, where Prevetkin's going to come in. He's not even trying to get a line on his resume. Went the distance with Anthony Joshua. No, I believe this guy is coming in and it's do or die. Right? He's going to throw some mean punches. He's going to turn it into a free-for-all. Right? Joshua is going to have to trade with him. Right? Prevetkin wants something to happen before the end of the fight. Right? I believe this warrior mindset has the idea of, look, I'm going to come in. There are going to be times where I put myself at risk. I need to break the envelope, not just push the envelope. I need to break the envelope to give myself a chance 
at the whim. And if this young champion knocks me out, so be it. I'll leave the ring knowing I did my damnedest. I believe that's the mindset. The bet I like, and I think this is an extremely dangerous fight for Joshua. Right? I'm reading in the press, people like Dylan White talking about their upcoming fight against Joshua. It's like, whoa, whoa, are you certain Joshua wins this fight? I'm not. As I said, jump ball to me. The bet I like here, really the casino has made this bet for me. Alexander Povetkin at 7-1, to one, sign me up. I like Pervetkin at 7-1, to one, hedged with Joshua by KO. Right? He's going to have an active, crafty vet in front of him. Who's going to be trying to take him out. I believe he's going to have to do something. I don't believe this is the Joseph Parker fight. Where he never has to take the right hand out of the holster. Where he can rely on a jab. He will not be able to land his jab with regularity on Pravetkin, who is one of the best athletes in the division and who knows how to bend at the waist and how to be mobile. Right? So I'm expecting a stoppage, but I want a taste of the 7-1 to one odds. The bet I like is Pravetkin. Simply to win at 7-1. to one. Hedged with Joshua by stoppage. But understand the risk involved. If this fight goes to the scorecards, and if Anthony Joshua wins by decision in his backyard in the United Kingdom, you lose it all. Substantial risk. But this is gambling. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. As I've said, the guys who Joshua has fought haven't moved and haven't been off at the side like I believe this opponent will be. I think Pravetkin is a live dog in this one. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments.